Okay, hi, you're watching Greg's Beat Eats, and today I'm going to show you two ways how I render beef fat into tallow, which is beef oil. Actually, the way that I render any fat into oil la, is actually the same process. And there are actually two ways that I use, la, you know. I did an earlier video where I actually rendered pork fat into uh, lard. Two ways, a normal way and the Chinese version and I'll link that in the video description below. In today's video, I'll show you where to actually get beef fat in Singapore and I'll show you two ways how to render the fat. I will also show you how to use it as an oil. Lah. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Safety and security are two of the most important aspects of daily internet life. Do you know that every single day, there are evil cunning hackers trying to do you harm and most internet users aren't even aware of it? You are unprotected on the internet. And don't you wish there was someone out there to protect you? Well, there is. Introducing Surfshark VPN, which turns you into an anonymous and hard to trace online user with a click of a button. And you can use Surfshark on unlimited devices. In addition, do you know Netflix and Disney Plus? Those streaming sites have particular content that's only available in certain countries and normally you can't access it. Using a VPN service like Surfshark gives you access that you need, especially when you're traveling and you need access to Netflix Singapore so that you can watch the latest sci-fi movie from Zack Snyder, Rebel Moon. Just connect to the service, refresh the page and access granted. Visit Surfshark.com and if you use the promo code GREGSBIGEATS, you'll get an exclusive deal plus 5 months extra for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there is no risk on your part. I have the Surfshark link in the description box below and now back to the review. So where do you get beef at? There are not many places where you can get beef at, it's very hard to find. In supermarkets, you may be able to get it, but it really depends. You have to just keep on asking and seeing whether they will actually sell it to you. You can try high-end butchers like Meet the Butcher, but your best bet is probably uh, beef butchers at the wet market. Actually, I recently discovered that maybe beef butchers at wet markets may not be the best place to find beef fat. You see, I interviewed a few butchers and found out that because beef can be quite expensive and wet market customers are not willing to pay a premium, most beef butchers will only stock cheaper cuts like uh, chuck beef. So what beef butchers do is to cut away the fat on the meat because customers do not like their meat to be fatty because of high cholesterol. And cuts like chuck beef do not have much fat on them. And the butchers, I mean, they will not order fat from suppliers lah, because there's simply no demand. That said, I know of some beef butchers who are starting to expand their range because customers are starting to get more affluent. Lah. So depending on the area, they will try to bring in some of the more expensive cuts like ribeyes, sirloins and briskets and wagyu, that sort of thing. Lah. But on the one hand, customers are getting affluent and they can afford more expensive meat, but they still have that old school thinking that fat is bad. So butchers will actually trim away the fat and throw it away and sell the remaining meat to customers. But for me, I've managed to negotiate like, with my butcher to sell the fat to me instead of throwing it away. And he sells the more expensive cuts. It's a bonus for him because he can actually make money from the fat for a change, whereas it would have been normally thrown away. Like. So be on the lookout for butchers who can sell you more expensive cuts like ribeyes, sirloins and briskets and talk to them and they may sell the fat to you for a price. I've managed to build up a relationship with my butcher. So he gives me maybe about 500 grams a week or so. That's if I'm lucky. Usually maybe sometimes it's only 100, 200 or 300 grams or 400 grams. Like. So what I do is that I have to supplement it by actually ordering it online. Sometimes you can find it on Shopee and Lazada. Okay, so this is how you get it online. Go to Lazada. Let's see if they have it. Uh, type B fat. And there you go, the first one over there. See? Mm. Tasty food affair beef. That is 650 and that's 500 grams. There's another one here, beef tallow. See? It's $17, but it's $17 for 300. Might as well do it yourself. Lah. Hop over to Shopee. Beef fat. This one, halal mince beef fat over here. $35 for 2 kg, which is insanely expensive. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's good, but yeah, expensive. Might as well go for the tasty food affair one over here. Lah. This is probably the same product, 500 grams for 6.85. So yeah. Okay, so what I have here is actually 500 grams of beef fat, which I've defrosted. 
So what I need to do now is to cut it up into smaller bite-sized pieces so that the fat renders out easily. Yeah, there you go. So you want a size roughly about this big lah. Bite-sized piece, as I said. So I've chopped out all the fat and now I need to split it into two lah so that I can render it two ways. There you go, two equal amounts of beef fat. Okay, so this is the first way of rendering. This is the normal way of how I render beef fat. Okay, I've got a cast iron pan here and I turn up the flame to high. Okay, then I pour in the fat Right, once I hear the sizzle of the fat on the pan, it means that the pan is hot enough and then I turn it down all the way. The whole point of turning the heat down is so that you actually render out the oil from the fat, but you don't actually burn the fat itself. So, Once you get a good sizzle going right, you need to stir it. You stir it so that the other parts of the fat actually get the heat. Already you can see that the oil is starting to render out and the fat is starting to brown. So what I do now is that I get a bowl and I get a pair of tongs and I take out the brown fat. Lah. That's okay. Now the other reason why you want to turn down the heat so that the fat actually renders is so that the rendered oil that you get right it doesn't actually reach its smoking point and it doesn't oxidize because once it reaches its smoking point right it starts to smoke and then it starts to oxidize then it becomes not as healthy for you lah okay this is more or less done now so i'm going to take everything out so i'm going to put the render oil inside a bowl So there we have it here, we've got beef tallow, ah, still quite hot, and that can be used for cooking, you, you can try some now if you want to, mmm, hot. It's got a very subtle beefy flavour, actually it's a very good cooking oil because it's actually rather neutral, you know, as compared to pork lard. Nah. And then you have the beef crispies which I left over over here, now these if you salt it a bit, there we go, a bit of salt. There we go, I added a bit of salt, very nice lah. Uh, what you can do is that, um, you can just eat it like this, it's a snack. Mm. Mm. The thing about uh, beef crispies is that they don't get as crispy as um, pork ladons, uh, the crispy pork leftovers. Your beef crispies are, they may get a little bit crispy, but it generally is on the softer side. I think it's because of the nature of the fat itself, uh, but still very nice to eat. Ooh. Okay, this is the other way how I render beef fat. It's basically the Chinese way. Lah, you know? So what you do is that you put the fat in. Okay. You add some water. About there so. And then you turn up the heat. Then you let it boil. And then while it's heating up right, you get a bowl. Then you get a ladle, and then you get a strainer and get it ready. And after a while, you see all the scum which actually comes out. So you want to skim the scum. Not like that. Yeah.
Now the reason for removing the scum is so that when the oil is rendered out, right, the oil actually looks clearer and purer and not so cloudy. La. Now once that's done, you turn the water down and then you remove the water. Okay, that's more or less done or so. Turn the heat back up to get rid of the remaining water. Then once it's gone, right, you turn it back down. You add some spring onion. And then you add some ginger. Then you add some salt as well. About that much as well. This is Celtic sea salt. La. You can use any salt, but try to avoid table salt, in my opinion. Now I'm going to turn the heat all the way down. I'm going to zoom in, as you can see, right? The fat is already starting to render out. See? So the reason why you put it low heat again is so that the fat doesn't burn and then the maximum amount of oil actually gets rendered out. So again what you do is that you actually take out the bits which have been uh, rendered out lah, like this one. Again you also want to take out the burnt um, ginger and uh, spring onion. Lah. Okay, that's more or less done. Just switch it off. I'm going to take all this out. And you can use the strainer in this case. No. Then you pour the render oil into another bowl. You're done. Okay, my mic cracked out and the audio was unusable. So I'm doing the ending bit right here. So there it is, beef fat rendered two ways, the normal way, which is this one, and the Chinese way, which is this one over here. So these are the two oils. The one on the right is normal rendered oil and the one on the left is flavored with ginger and spring onion. It looks a bit darker because some of the ginger and spring onion got charred, but it's actually perfectly fine to use. It's also got a slightly greenish tint because of the spring onion. Next, the beef crispies. The one on the right is the normal beef crispies flavored with a bit of salt. And on the left, beef crispies flavored with spring onion and ginger again. So the ginger and spring onion flavored beef tallow obviously has that wonderful aroma of ginger and spring onion. So it will be suitable for a lot of Chinese cooking. Obviously, it's going to be less neutral tasting as a result. Lah. As I said, the oil looks dark, but if you lift it up right, you can see that it isn't as dark as you think. Don't worry about the oil being bad or oxidized, because beef tallow is incredibly heat resistant. Next, the beef crispies with fried ginger, spring onion and a bit of salt. Again, it's got a chewy crispiness with that wonderful ginger, spring onion aroma. And of course, you can eat the spring onion and ginger as well. As you can tell in the shot, I can't stop eating the beef crispies, you know, it is that good to eat. Okay, this is just to show you what beef tallow looks like once it's been refrigerated. So yeah, something like this. Almost solid. And once your pan is hot, right, the fat will actually melt down. Lah. And then you just use it as oil. So, uh, see, very hard, see. So I'm going to fry some eggs just to show you um, how the oil reacts lah, once it's fried. Okay. Turn on the heat. But as you can tell, and the oil is slowly melting.
There we go. So there you go, see? Three fried eggs with some dark soy sauce and I put the remaining beef oil on it. Perfect. So there you go, I hope you found that useful. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below lah, and I'll try my best to answer them. So thanks for watching Great Speed Eats. If you liked this episode, give it a like, subscribe and comment below and turn on the notifications bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.